wool has a complex biological, chemical and physical structure that gives it a range of features, such as naturally high insulation and UV protective qualities. It's also flame retardant, breathable, non-allergenic, elastic, easy care, machine washable and biodegradable. But there's still much to be learned about what gives wool these qualities and where they can be applied. Ag Research has been partnering with local and international businesses to develop new uses for wool, including air filters, combat sports clothing and footwear. The traditional markets for wool, particularly the wool that New Zealand produces, the crossbred types of wool that we produce in bulk, are still well utilised in traditional applications like carpets, interior textiles generally. But a lot of that is in the commodity space and there's a lot of pressure on the price in that area and a lot of competition from synthetic materials. So the challenge uh, that we face at the moment is to find new outlets for the crossbred wool uh, that will generate a higher value and shift out of that commodity space into more functional areas where the wool can really exploit its natural properties and provide a real functional benefit for consumers. We're increasingly interested in what the wool carpet can do to improve things like indoor air quality and health and well-being uh, because we know that they will uh, do things like absorbing volatiles from the air in, in a room uh, which are you know, potentially harmful chemicals that will be locked up inside the fibre. Um, so what, are the, we, what we need to know are what are the scenarios that wool is being used in now, what's different about those, how does wool perform in those situations. And then once we start moving into new application areas, then we almost have a, a clean slate in terms of what we need to understand. Um, and if we, if we look at uh, sort of technical uh, applications for wool, like uh, filters for example, um, then many of the things that are important for, for the carpet, um, like the, the fibre length or the colour of the fibre, um, uh, are not necessarily relevant for that application. We could potentially be breeding specifically for those attributes, developing new breeds or at least selecting flocks that have higher proportions of that particular attribute. So they may not necessarily be distinguished to different breeds, but a, a particular wool grower may have a flock that is, you know, the, the wool is optimised for that particular application. But the other thing that they could well be doing is changing the way that they are managing their wool production. So it could be that a particular fibre length is required for a certain application, in which case that could influence their shearing practices. And there could potentially be other things like that as well. Another property of the fibre that's very important in some of these more sophisticated technical applications will be a lack of things like vegetable matter. So whereas you have multiple processing steps in traditional products that can remove vegetable matter from the fibre, in some of these emerging applications uh, you don't necessarily have that opportunity, so the fibre might have to be of a higher standard to start with. If we take something like this crossbred wool here, that's being utilised in a number of different products. But what we need to understand about this type of fibre is how does it perform in applications such as a filtration scenario when you're now using the fibre as a medium to remove pollutants from the air, so whether they're particles or aerosols or volatiles. So what we now need to understand is what about the wool fibre influences the way that it does that. Is it uh, its protein composition? Uh, is it the, the shape of the scales on the fibre? Uh, to what extent does the fibre need to be um, uh, modified to improve those properties? You know, could we do things to chemically modify the fibre that will change uh, that type of functionality? The thing that a filter needs to do is to be able to remove pollutants from the air, but not be too difficult to draw air through, otherwise it becomes uncomfortable. So there's some clever stuff about this product. You can produce a filter that has an extremely highly breathable structure, but still has a very good efficiency at removing particles. But the other thing that you get when you have wool in a filter is that if you, if you have worn a respirator or mask for a prolonged period of time, um, there's often condensation that forms inside that uh, material. And because the wool has its natural absorbency for moisture, you can actually delay the onset of that condensation. So you get a, almost a comfort advantage from having wool, in, even though it's in that technical application. In the case of the shoes and putting wool into this type of product, what the original concept was, was that you could translate some of the comfort properties of wool that were starting to become well known from next to skin base layer garments directly to the foot. 
But I think what's ended up being the most important attribute for wool in this application is its ability to resist odour development. And while there's been anecdotal evidence for a long time about wool's ability to prevent odour build-up in garments and now in footwear, the sort of science that's going on now is trying to understand exactly why wool does that well and what are the conditions in which it absorbs odour and resists it very effectively. What could we do to enhance that sort of behaviour and make it even better? Because there's a growing sector in the apparel space, this so-called athleisure sector, which is a kind of crossover hybrid between athletic wear and casual wear, where things like well, you might expect a garment is able to be worn at the gym, but you're also going to keep that garment and wear it back at the office. And if it gets really smelly and it's uncomfortable, then that's not going to be a great idea. But if you've got something made from wool, then you can be confident that the odour side of that equation is going to be pretty well dealt with. In the case of this fabric here, which is a wool-based fabric developed for a sportswear application for combat sports, it's a really good example of how you need to combine wool with other fibre types to get the best of both worlds. So it's a fabric that's used to make the gi, the robe, if you like, that's worn in combat sports like judo and karate. The traditional material is a cotton canvas, a heavy cotton material that when it absorbs sweat becomes very heavy and uncomfortable. So when we were working with the people that came up with this concept to help them develop the fabric, we needed to combine wool with another material, uh, polyester in this case, to create a fabric that's got the robust structure but also has all the comfort benefits of wool as well. We need more of these types of products because um, some of these, they address what could be considered to be niches. Um, some of them can grow to be potentially very large. The filtration market is potentially very large, but they'll take time to mature and there are opportunities for more products that we haven't conceived of yet uh, that will utilise the fibre in these new types of areas. This programme was made with funding from New Zealand On Air.